the system approaching perfection. We'll walk deeper into the belly of the beast if it means I'm able to... Hi guys, this is Danny at the Crypto Show, and I'm here with my good friend Lynn. Known you for almost five years I now. Know. Uh, we wandered upon each other at the first Texas Bitcoin conference and uh, you were just like drudging around holding up the sign <laughs> yeah. about and nobody I mean some people knew about free Ross but or about Ross's situation but not really a lot of people did so it, it was uh, really good that I put you in in front of uh, Luke Radowski and and get some really good media for you rather than what you were getting from the mainstream absolutely I didn't know what I was doing I was kind of just putting up flyers and kind of lost honestly and Danny yeah. was so kind and just and we've gave been, advice, yeah, good advice so from, very, from the very beginning yeah. uh, that was exactly when the crypto show kicked off was just maybe the week before that and Harlan was you know the creator of the crypto show was really passionate about that and we did fundraisers from the very so beginning too, yep. and we did one today well here at Porkfest we raised nine hundred dollars more awesome. so, these guys are like true blue people <laughs> It's been so. It's been a long. It's been a long journey and so up and down and up and down and it's up right now. Yeah, but it's hard to believe Ross has been <clears throat> in the cage that long. That's the only thing. What are like? So what are some uh, of the? Just like a a brief gloss over of each of the stages, up to this one for yeah, each okay. like the you Go know down the memory circuit. Lane, and, the yeah. wonderful memories of this nightmare. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, of course Ross is arrested. Um, I started just trying to get attention and network with whoever I could. And actually, Harlan, who we just mentioned, Harlan Dietrich, called me and said, I'm going up to this place in New Hampshire to, he made t-shirts, he hand screened t-shirts. Yeah, I still have the and, screens. <laughs> <laughs> and said, in New Hampshire, I said, well, I can come and, um, you know, hand out flyers. And he goes, well, no, you should speak. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't think so. And so then he said, well, let me find out. And they said, well, the deadline's passed. And I'm like, oh, thank God, you know, I don't have to speak. And then they go, no, wait, we're gonna make an exception and we want you to speak on Saturday night in the main pavilion. And so that was my first speaking engagement ever. Was here? And here, at Porkfest in 2014. And Nick Gillespie, editor-in-chief of Reason TV, was in the audience. And so out of that, he asked me to be on Reason and it just sort of got more exposure. And um, so it kind of started me off on being able to really bring attention to the bigger issues in Ross's case and to raise money and to, you know, have a voice. Because before that, it was just mainstream media sensationalistic garbage, right. which is pretty much, you know. You know, in, in the first trial, uh, you know, the court has these rules and one of the rules is fruit of the poisonous tree. And you're supposed to, any evidence that's ill-gotten is supposed to be thrown out, but yet, mm -hmm. Or they banned were, from that. Anything right. that leads to that. And, yeah, yeah, anything that leads to that is inadmissible. Mm -hmm. And yet they were hiding evidence, like the, mm -hmm. the, the two corrupt cops who were likely uh, admins to the site. They had the and, ability to be. And they mm -hmm. were stealing from the site. So if that's not corrupt information, I, I really don't know what is. And, mm -hmm. and that being hidden yes. from the jury is just absolutely ridiculous. And how, no. so what were the steps after that? Yeah. We, we already know that was okay, a bunch so of BS. Okay, so anyway, we started fighting for Ross, and then, of course, um, you know, he's in jail. And um, then, you know, the next year, we had he went to trial. So all that, during that time, I was raising money to pay the lawyers and that sort of thing. And uh, we had the trial, which was horrendous and shocking, because I, I you know, I, I, I you know, certainly was somewhat skeptical of government, but I thought we had fair trials to an extent. I, and I, I just could not believe this trial. You know, the fact that the corrupt agents, now in prison, by the way, um, were not permitted to be known to the jury, uh, that uh, our lawyers' um, cross-examination of witnesses, government witnesses, was shut down, um, that we weren't allowed to bring other witnesses, they were precluded, um, that the government was able to talk about uncharged allegations that they never had the jury rule on, but smeared Ross with, that the, um, the attorneys weren't allowed to bring up evidence that there was more than one Dread Pirate Roberts, which was the handle of the entity, who, those entities likely, who were using it. <clears throat> likely know. being those police officers now, that were discredited. Been, they had the ability to do that, or, you know, lots of different people. That wasn't permitted to be known to the jury. So it was very much a con carefully controlled narrative by the prosecution. And it was shocking. And uh, so Ross was convicted. And then the following May, he was sentenced, and um, 
That was another shocker. The um, judge <clears throat> used uncharged allegations to give him a double life sentence without parole plus 40 years. Thing, and this was actually now being contested in the Supreme Court, uh, brought to the attention of the Supreme Court, I should say. So he was sentenced to double life. And of course, this was horribly difficult for all of us. I mean, it's just shocking. And uh, no violent charges, no victims named at trial. No one came forward at trial to say Russ had harmed them in any way. And to give him this kind of draconian sentence, the whole world was shocked. I mean, people were writing about it and shocked that they, she would do that. And uh, so that since then, we've just been fighting to have this, we appealed it to the Second Circuit. They denied everything. Um, and so we've gone to the Supreme Court. And the two issues at the Supreme Court, by the time you get to the Supreme Court, <clears throat> it's got to be fairly narrow. It's not the whole trial. I mean, there's so much that was wrong. And, uh, and by the way, I just want to also mention, because to me it's really bad, in the sentence, sentencing uh, hearing, the judge referenced Ross's philosophical and political beliefs. And she said, I, don't, I, I know you started this site for philosophical reasons, and I'm just not sure you've given those up. Well, these philosophical beliefs are free market, libertarian values, no, do no harm, no force. Those were the beliefs of, or the, the, um, of the site, voluntary interaction. And uh, she used those to give him a life sentence, which is very frightening because that's a, a First Amendment free speech violation that's prohibited in sentencing. In any case, um, yeah, so now we're, we've, Ross has submitted petitions to the Supreme Court. One is a Fourth Amendment issue, which is the question is, is it a violation of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution for the government to search and seize our, any of our internet browsing activity and history. And um, when you think about how invasive that is and how much information you can learn from people's internet habits, religious affiliations, political orientations and uh, interests, um, sexual orientation and activity, apps, all kinds of things that um, is personal. And it's, and it's relevant and it can be used to blackmail people if they're doing things they don't want others to know or like people like judges and Congress people and so on. Uh, they, it can be used to persecute political groups they don't like. Um, you know, it's personal information. And up until now, since 1979, when the Supreme Court ruled, it's been open season for the government to secretly, without any oversight, search all of our internet activity. Uh, so that's right now, um, Ross's case was not rejected by the Supreme Court. It was linked with another case, Carpenter versus U.S., which is actually addressing a cell phone uh, search question. Which these question. cases are actually, uh, were recently listed as the most important cases for the Fourth Amendment, uh, and the top one being Carpenter. So, yeah, tell yeah. us how Carpenter affects Ross's yeah, case. Yeah, so Carpenter's is actually uh, it, questioning whether it's constitutional for the government to track us with our cell phones using our location and cell phone history. And the court yesterday ruled in favor of Carpenter saying, no, it's not. So now it remains to be seen how they will group Ross's case with this and, and cover as well internet browsing activity. It, I think they will. I mean, they've been holding it pending Carpenter, so we're hopeful that they will. And that that would mean that <clears throat> hopefully Ross's case, like Carpenter's, would be remanded or sent back to the appellate court in the Second Circuit for them to address this part of the case. And of course, as you mentioned, the fruit of the poisonous tree. Well, the internet browsing activity leads to almost all of their um, evidence that they claim they have. Well, if they, it, depending how they rule, it could preclude all that evidence. What are the main uh, the know. main issues that the defense are, are claiming on in the the Supreme Court? Yeah, so it's that it's that it's illegal search and seizure of his internet traffic, and the other one is a Sixth Amendment issue. But I don't know if they're going to address it or not. But it's a Sixth Amendment issue, in which it addresses the fact that by the judge using uncharged allegations, which were never proven at trial, never judged uh, by a jury, to give him a life sentence, violates the Sixth Amendment because the Sixth Amendment of the Bill of Rights was written to protect the accused from exactly this, a judge deciding something is true when a jury hasn't ruled on it. Twelve people, supposedly of your peers, are supposed to decide, not one individual. And that's not what happened here. The jury never did decide. 
it was never they were never asked to decide it was just an allegation that the prosecution used and uh, then dropped and the judge decided she thought it was true and uh, used it to give Ross double life plus 40 years All right. um, and Rob Ross denies the allegation <clears throat> is, is no there any died. mention <laughs> of the excessive uh, you know as far as claims for on the excessive uh, sentencing well, that was brought up by the different amicus group, uh, amici, uh, the br briefs they wrote, Friends of the Court. There were 21 organizations that joined uh, our petition from all sides of the political spectrum saying, you know, and some of them addressed the sentencing and how draconian and excessive it was and how this excessive sentencing in the United States is leading to this mass incarceration of people spending lifetimes that are nonviolent um, people, like what, Ross. Eight, eight hundred percent. It has metastasized eight hundred percent since the drug war in the eighties. It's the the numbers of people in the prisons. It went from like a steady one hundred eighty thousand for decades to now eight hundred percent more uh, growth in the prisons. Seventeen thousand of them, more than that now, are nonviolent, like Ross, that are serving life, and life yeah. sentences alone <clears throat> have quintupled since the drug war in the eighties. Yeah. This is a, a, this is, America wasn't always like this. It's become the biggest incarcerator on the planet because of these, um, you know, what they're doing now. Right, and uh, <clears throat> one of the, the problems with that is also uh, lobbyists for private prisons. And, yep. you know, we, if we go back to the beginning, uh, there, there, were, unions, there were links, there were links. Uh, I mean, how did Ross end up in New York from San Francisco? Uh, well, Chuck Schumer, who Senator Chuck Schumer from New York, was a big impetus behind the investigation. And he claimed it was about drugs. I, I can test that. I think that he was a senior <clears throat> member of the Senate Finance and Banking Committees. And I think it was about the use of Bitcoin, because Bitcoin was the only means of exchange on the site. It was really a privacy site that um, w was intended to protect privacy and anonymity. It didn't care. It depended on what vendors and buyers wanted to exchange with Bitcoin. It wasn't like, oh, this is a drug site. And in fact, certain things were prohibited because it, it was a there was a value about voluntary interaction, no force, no victims. So, for instance, child pornography was not allowed and stolen property. and. Uh, violent services, but um, in any what, case, was there were they allowed to mention the legal services were on there because that, that would have kind of been a, a comparison to Craigslist. Right, and, no, the I mean, judge I wouldn't always, let that be said. In I know, and I always make the comparison to Craigslist mm -hmm. with the Silk Road because right now you could go there and get a prostitute yeah. or whatever kind of drugs you want on Craigslist right. if you just know the secret right. password. Yep, and and I think Craigslist is well aware of that. Have more than one person have actually died yes. as a result from Craigslist, and no one actually did die. There was a no, fake murder no that was dies. perpetrated by the police. Mm -hmm. They were now in prison. <laughs> who are now in prison, <laughs> um, so there was no actual... Yeah. No, there was no murders or deaths or anything, and that's absolutely right, and the principle is the same, and uh, yeah. Um, but in any case, um, what was the question you asked me before I was answering? Oh, uh, we were I talking about, about I, what I was trying to get uh, to sorry. about, uh, you made a different point about Chuck Schumer. Oh, right, um, right. That's what I wanted to and, say. So Chuck Schumer. And oh, I was you. trying to make the point of uh, him being affiliated yeah. with yes. uh, uh, private prisons. Well, that's true, too. He has received $100,000 donations in his campaign from private prisons. He also was, Pre Barrara, the lead, lead prosecutor in Ross's case, um, was Chuck Schumer's special counsel for almost five years and a, a close associate even today. And the judge herself was uh, recommended by Schumer for her position. Ross was arrested in California, but he was brought back to Schumer State in New York. Wasn't and, this a time when, when Schumer was running for re-election yeah. and he also appointed the judge? And, Did, and He didn't appoint her, he recommended her. Uh, Obama recommended. appointed her, but yeah, yeah, he recommended her. And, and he's very much involved with Wall Street and the big financial interests. And the reason I also am convinced that it's about Bitcoin and not drugs is that the other defendants in the Silk Road case got very, very low sentences. I mean, 10 years for the biggest drug seller on down. I mean, yeah, and, the, and even even the following, which was right on the heels before the Silk Road even closed, was Silk Road number two. Yep. And he ended up with nothing. Nothing. He's free. 13 and, days. Uh, yeah, exactly. Which is obviously he was cooperating with the government in order to get that something yeah. like that. But their, their argument that, well, Ross is so dangerous, which is a joke because he's totally nonviolent, but so dangerous he must be kept in a cage for life. But then Blake Benthal is out after 13 days and 
uh, his site uh, sold more drugs in a month and had more listings. So they're obviously not trying to protect anybody from Ross or Blake Benthal. Do you think that were there any it's things a, it's, a, it's a message I believe on, he's on Silk Road too? Were there other uh, things that were more dangerous, like pornography or any of the things that were prohibited on Silk Road? I, you know, I actually don't know. I'm not. A, that I would do be interesting know. to find yeah, out. I don't know the answer to that because uh, I think mm -hmm. it was a little more free and wild. That <laughs> a lot of sites are though. Yeah. And you know that judge said, "Oh, this is going to be a deterrent. This life sentence." And right afterwards, all these dark net markets opened up. It wasn't a deterrent at all, but the um, drug war doesn't stop doesn't stop drug you know, use. We, we know that. We always talk about the implications of Ross's case on the average person. I mean, what does this mean for everybody else's freedom? To whoever's watching, what does Ross's case mean for their mm -hmm. internet privacy and freedom? Well, I mean, I don't think most people would be happy to think that the government can freely and secretly and without any oversight track everything you do on the internet. I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't like to think that every time I get on the internet, I'm giving them permission to just watch me and and, and use anything they find against me. And you know, again, well, it, it even know, if it's not and me, it's not it's, even that. It, uh, well, I mean, it is that. But in addition, if they're able to do that, they're able to alter your history and frame you for something well, that's just very as true. easily. I'm Digital just, evidence is extremely easy to alter. Just like we're talking about with the Silk Road, with with the officers that were involved, exactly. and probably they were. Dread Pirate Roberts themselves. Yeah, they certainly have the ability to be, and I've told experts have told me that it's child's play for them to plant things, tamper with things, delete things. It's, it's digital, and almost all the evidence in Ross's case was digital. They did have a live witness who basically said Ross had told them he had um, given the so site for, for uh, did has the defense mentioned anything about chain of custody when when they're talking about all this digital evidence because. Evidence is supposed to be, be secured by something called chain of custody. They're supposed to be able to verify where it came from and what, every step of the way. So, like, if a, a undercover cop is meeting with a CI and they want to verify that they gave these marked bills to that cop or, or to the CI and he went in and he came back and everything just has to be secured all along the way. You have to verify every step. How do they verify the chain of evidence on for digital evidence. How can they Good verify question. that extra all the way? They can't. You can't. And they, and they can't show forensically that it's been deleted or tampered with. And in fact, after trial, uh, it was discovered that there was a big section of evidence that was shown the jury that had been tampered with. We have proof. Well, then that's that's and a break in the chain. Yeah. And but, so but the evidence is no good. Because, because we have to have another trial. And the other thing is, um, uh, Oh gosh, I went blank. I mean, it, um, it, it, is that something that was actually brought up? Did, did no, the defense ever argue trial. this? Oh, the chain of command. Well, it argue, tried to argue the laptop investigation, and we're about to publish exactly what happened. And it, they broke protocol over and over again. It's a joke how they did it, and the judge shut it down. She wouldn't let she wouldn't let him cross examine effectively about the various things that he did during the um, they did during the investigation, and she wouldn't let us bring our own uh, crypto security expert. To explain. Andreas Antonopoulos. Well, that was Bitcoin. Oh, okay. And then Stephen Bellavin was the technical expert, and neither of them were permitted to testify. It's amazing how there's a separate set of rules mm -hmm. for the court and the defense. And she coached the, the prosecution. She said, oh, what you said wasn't clear. You need to explain that better to the jury. I'm like, what? She also made a statement to the jury that everything you see that everything, all the evidence presented, you will have enough to reach a verdict. Mm -hmm. Well, the only person presenting evidence was the government because the defendant doesn't present evidence. They, the, the government has to establish, yeah. the, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt, guilt. So she's basically saying you can trust whatever they say. Right. And I she know, said that before. That's trial. another. That's another rule that anytime the judge um, blatantly. Yeah. advocates for one side or the other that they should be recused. Yes, she should. And we actually have uh, submitted uh, that exact petition that she should recuse herself based on that and the fact that she anonymized the jury before trial. This tells the jury, this guy's so dangerous that you need, don't say your name. But she didn't go through the normal protocol and she did it secretly. And that, the, the appellate court doesn't seem to be worried about this. And, and that was part of uh, people basically First Amendment, where people were sta standing outside holding signs, oh, and that, that was part of a threat. It was basically a threat to stop protesters mm -hmm. from interjecting right. their, their ideas into the case. So. Yeah, she did that too.
Yeah, it was pretty shocking, and it, it really has opened my eyes to the trouble we're in in terms of our justice system in America. I don't know about other countries, uh, but here we are in, and that's why 98% of people plea and don't go to trial because they're bullied and threatened by prosecutors, and and it's true. They'll probably lose and they'll get a worse sentence. They might as well just say, even if they're innocent, which by the numbers, some of them have to be. There's 98% of people that are arrested are not all guilty. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this gets asked a lot, but how often do you meet? the parents or grandparents of somebody who's a victim of the drug war and they just come up to you and want to share their story? Well, I meet people at the prison all the time whose oh, lives I, have well, been... I mean, just like when you're out and about in different different areas, like, a, you know, conferences I or whatever. A lot of people who've been victims just of the criminal justice system and how pe they're persecuted and prosecuted in this country. Lots of people will come up to me and tell me their story. And it's horrible. There's so many people. You don't realize how many people. I didn't realize before all this how many right. people have served. How many felons I'm friends with that I didn't even know. Right. You know, it's like, and they're good people. It's like, how the heck? You yeah. know, it's like mostly drug war. And um, people whose lives have been ruined or that someone was just telling me his father, he missed out on Christmas with his dad because of the drug war mm -hmm. when he's eight years old. He was just here a second ago. Yeah. It's like different people no, who he said, are He actually stuck. said eight Christmases. Oh, he said eight Christmases? Yeah. I thought he said eight years old. Okay, no. sorry. Eight yeah. years. Yeah. Because See, that of hurts the drug children. war. And I, yeah, drug war, yeah, because he's father. And it's like, it hurts children. I meet which, these children which in the prison. a lot of They're, times perpetuates yes. the same thing. And then they end up often in serving time because it becomes... And the families fall apart, and I mean, oh my God, it's just... It, yeah, it, a lot of people, and it's not stopping anyone from using drugs. They can't even keep drugs out of the prison. Right, you know, exactly. There's plenty of drugs in the prison. They can't keep that out. You know, if they can't do it there, where it's totally controlled, how do they expect? Well, so, they don't expect it. They know it's not going to work. That's not why they're doing it. Is there like think. one thing that stands out when these people come to you and, and talk to you? Like, what's the one thing that they all that seems to always be at the center of <laughs> this of, blatant, of that? unjust, unfairness and persecution of Americans? and others in other countries because we happen to go to other countries and grab non-americans who've never even been in the united states and yeah, take them back ross to new york is in, ross is in the fed so there's a large number of people that are actually uh abducted from other they're abducted. countries they're literally abducted. they're literally abducted from and other countries by the feds true. and and uh it's ex true. extradited he knows over them here personally. but uh it's mostly people their lives are are savaged really they're, they've been and then they're so hurt and so um, it's just heartrending to hear their stories and what's happened. And there's a yeah. guy, a friend of, um, he's a friend of a friend, and I also, this man, he, ten, I don't know how many years ago, maybe 20, I don't know, sold his, gave his girlfriend, sorry, a little bit of crack. Now that's not good. Yeah. Okay, whatever. It was personal use. She turned him in. He's got like a 60 year sentence. He's a, <laughs> I mean, He's now, this is 20 years later, and you know, his son has had to grow up without his dad. Um, his his, his ex-wife, who I met, she's like, he's a good man, you know, he made a mistake, but come on, it's not like he's gonna get out yeah. and start dealing crap. It's horrible. And even, I think he's got officials and go, uh, people <coughs> begging the, it was a state case, to release him, even the, I think even the prosecutor, and I, they won't do it. I went to a, I went to a cannabis conference in, in Arizona last year, and the keynote speaker was Vicente Fox, the oh, ex-president sure. of Mexico, and that was his, that was his whole argument, is that prohibition does not work, does, and he always it creates starts, crime and violence. He's, he starts his speech every time, he, I've seen this speech actually given in multiple places, and he always starts it off with, it didn't work for Adam and Eve, and it's not going to work <laughs> now. Yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, he even points out that Mexico is the victim of the drug war because it actually does not produce the drugs. It's just, it's just the alleyway the that everybody crime. is carrying the drugs because the drugs are coming from South America. That's right. And as they pass through Mexico, they bring the violence with it. And, and by legalizing Mexico. it, they can, in, they yes. can end that. I know, I know because we have a business in Costa Rica, it's in Costa Rica too, yeah. and I'm sure Nicaragua never Even did. now, like, so, with the legalization of marijuana so much here in the U.S., it's starting to actually go the other way. Uh, 
marijuana is starting to be smuggled into Mexico <laughs> because of the quality is so much better here oh that they're literally smuggling it back from the U.S back into Mexico Crazy. because it's legal here and illegal right. there. So right. well, I mean, yeah, there's a perfect, level, yeah. yeah, it's a perfect uh, <clears throat> example of it right there. Gosh. That's, and that's, of course, if you know, if it were like any other product, like, um, you know, coffee or flour, I'm, it would be, there'd be no violence. All the gangs would go away. The cartels would go away. There wouldn't be the incentive for money and violence. And, you know, it's not like Absolute and Smirnoff are having fight, you know, gang <laughs> fights over their vodka. You know, well, it just takes that, all that away. That's because Absolute and, buys Smirnoff ah, and yeah. distills it down to be be called Absolute. That's why <laughs> I, I was told this by yeah, a vodka. Right. Well, yeah, like oh, Free market. 90% of all vodka is actually Smirnoff. Oh. And, <laughs> and they just distill it down and call it something else. Well, but. no one's dying in the street <laughs> over it anyway. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> um, how can people get involved and can somebody else can somebody write letters to the judge or submit more amicus uh well that'll take the those the amicus come with a, a petition to the courts and mm -hmm. then they join it's a friend of the court and again it was all sides of the political spectrum this case is appeals to you know it brings in a lot of different issues but um freeross.org has lots of information ways to help of course Hiring lawyers and going battling the federal government costs a lot of money, constantly, and um, but uh, and also spreading the word. I mean, you know, the narrative needs to be revealed as what you know what really matters here and what really happened. And so, social media, you know, we have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. You know, like us and follow us, and that all helps. And, um, yeah, yeah, like us and share it. Mm -hmm. And also, what would be some of the other cases that are that are similar to Ross's that liking and sharing would bring more awareness and help issues. and help yeah well, Ross's case as I've well. I've personally signed some petitions on change.org of people who are serving life for marijuana as is a friend of Ross's in the prison um, Tony who's done 13 years he's got a life sentence for marijuana and the federal prisons in Colorado I mean how insane is that right. but um, there's lots of people there's several people serving life for marijuana and those cases are important. Um, I think, you know, I'm hoping that there'll be more pardons um, and commutations like there was for Alice Johnson. You know, of course that woman. I don't want yeah. my tax money being spent on the most evil and expensive hotel in the world. So, which is what a prison so is. actually maybe what- not it, hurting anybody. The, maybe the best thing that you can do to help, especially if you have a large Twitter following, yeah. uh, is to tweet at Kim Kardashian, maybe. who will then tweet at president trump and maybe pardon ross yeah i mean, th I mean that's, that's what it's come down to understand this is not you know the the whole drug kingpin ross is no more a kingpin well, we, anyway and then any web host is a kingpin we have, is, is is jeff bezos a kingpin is he controlling every buy and i mean it's 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 they use that to threaten him and to punish him but it's absurd he's not pablo escobar or or el chapo he, you know who are apparently violent i mean you know it's like he's not he's he's a geeky guy who very idealistic and loves freedom and had you know had an idea for a platform yeah. basically yeah it's uh it's it's funny how like right now you have dennis rodman affecting the war in yeah, north in korea. korea kim kardashian getting you know someone out of jail who had That's served great. two she decades in jail it, it's come to the point where yeah, celebrities grandmother. celebrities are the only way to get to the white house and, mm -hmm. and, and enact change so mm -hmm. maybe that works so give it a try out of somebody a pardon uh, do, oh, yeah, do what? Got, i think posthumously but he got, got a pardon for some boxer or something oh That's wow right. yeah Awesome. Another one. So I don't know. I mean, yeah. Public, a, uh, public opinion. Public opinion. Yeah. So. I wish we would have went after more public opinion in the first, in the first go around. But you know, we, it's hard because the mainstream media. <laughs> well, yeah, and, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and the, but the mainstream media also distorts everything. So it's. But yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't have hurt. No, I know. It's hard to know what to do when you're <laughs> yeah. in this situation. It's really yeah. tough to know what to do. Yeah. Well, uh, that, I guess that's it. Check out freeross.org. Yeah. See how you can get involved. Look for other cases similar to that and get them all out there. I think the more you bring these cases to the light. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's you know, true. Something's out of The more change. effect it'll have. The other thing is if anyone has political connections, 
like we were just talking yeah. about. Yeah, Please if you let know, me know, you can contact me from. There's a contact. If you know room. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> well, it's not only Kim, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's hey, kind yeah, of, yeah, I do it. It's kind of like um, that. <laughs> yeah, but also, you know, you can always contact me through the website. Uh, there's a contact um, on the Flitter. There's a contact place. So just uh, I'll I'll get them the email. So yeah, if you have any suggestions or contacts, that's great. Yeah. All right. Thank Peace. you.